Welcome to Amcon Solutions, Jake here. Can a metastatic device be easily radio direction found? The short answer is it depends on many factors. And from my research, it is definitely more complicated than some people will suggest. So in today's discussion, we're gonna explore how easily a basic hunter, I'm gonna break it into two categories, basic and advanced hunters, could radio direction find your mystastic node. Uh, I will additionally be posing a challenge to the radio direction finding community to demonstrate on a video how they could track down a mystastic device so easily. Challenge accepted. I did a lot of online research and could not find any demonstrations and videos other than the drive-by comments on some of my videos and other people's videos about how simple it is to radio direction find a metastatic device. Disclaimer there, of course, if someone has metastatic and they're on the default long fast channel um, using the public keys and someone else is using the same thing and they're reporting their exact location, okay, well, you don't need to radio direction find that individual if they're reporting their exact location. I always recommend not doing so, and we'll talk about some of that in the end, about how you can you know, better protect yourself if you don't want someone to be able to find your exact location. Um, I do have very minimal radio direction finding in the amateur radio side uh, experience, so I'll be pushing, you know, some of this is based off of, like I said, online research and some assumptions. That's why it's a discussion. I'm open to your feedback uh, because I really want to know. So, and I, I know there's probably some other people out here that are also interested in this topic. So, and that's why I'm provo you know, proposing that challenge to the community. Show us, you know, I, I want to see, you know, because I like to learn. So. Basic hunter, we're gonna break each one, basic hunter, advanced hunter, equipment skills, challenges, and then some of the things they might need to um, hunter. work through some of their assumptions that they, they're working through to be able to find a device. So equipment for a basic hunter, some of the equipment they might use, RTL, SDR, using the RTL 433 plugin. I've used this several times in the past. It's been probably six months. The last time I used the plugin, it wasn't decoding like it was supposed to. The first time I used it, it was working fine. I'm not sure if it was because of a firmware update it must stick and the plugin need to be updated. I'll have to try it again here in the near future and see if I'm able to get it working again. Dragon OS with the Mistastic SDR built in. So that's something you could build. The note here is not all this stuff is very plug and play. So you're still, even if you're a basic hunter, and I kind of broke that category up by not only just equipment, but the cost of the equipment. And then we're, you know, obviously talk skills. I have no skills. So in the equipment, really it's kind of about the price. Um, so, you have other things like the Clockwork uh, U console. You can add the LoRa board kit to that. The plus side of that device is now you have an SDR in it and you have the Mistastic app on there. So you could, you could bounce between the two to help you uh, better radio direction find a node. So a Nano VNA, this would be the basic form like uh, they do in the amateur radio community and in fox hunting where they've got a handheld uh, radio, you know, typically a VHF or UHF um, handheld and a directional antenna, a Yagi, and they're taking the signal strength and determining the best signal strength, taking a bearing that leads us to map uh, reading and navigation, which should be something that you need to be familiar with if you're using some of these more basic methods, because you're going to have to take bearings with a compass, plot it on a map, and then go to different locations and then plot and then try to basically find those points of intersection and as you get closer you might have to take more and so on and so forth but this is not a the whole video on how to do it um, <clears throat> challenges multi-path distortion signal reflection which uhf uh, is really good at especially when you get into urban environments um, 
and then the mesh hopping this is anything it could be mestastic or any other mesh radio setup how do you determine that which node you're you know that you're still pointed at the node that you're trying to find uh, if you're getting signals from all over the place from other mestastic devices so that lends into the shared spectrums i don't really like sharing the ism bands that Laura uses that's unlicensed and is has a lot of other things on it that are operating because it's a license free band, you know, low power, so on and so forth. Last time I used the RTL SDR with the 433 plug in in Europe, I was getting things like tire pressure monitor systems, wireless doorbell setups, people's car fobs, their remotes. I was, I was picking up all kinds of things. So that's going to pose even more challenges to, you know, effectively pinpointing somebody's mesh device. And then, of course, by nature, it's low power. It does have pretty amazing range, especially if it has, you have, you're in an open area or you're elevated. So even with the low power, it can go quite a ways. And then short transmission time. So very short bursts. Typically, people are just sending a message or two. If they're not sitting there like in the amateur radio community, you might get someone that's on a repeater that's just, you know, telling their, their buddy that lives across town about what they did last Sunday. I said shut up already. They could be talking for minutes at a time. Uh, so those longer transmissions makes it easier to get your bearings on that on that position. So, uh, so some of the things else is if you combine this with a metastatic node, of course, or the ability to decode, you're gonna be able to analyze some of the message metadata, uh, which will help you identify the originating node ID. Now, this could help you pinpoint a certain node out of other nodes out there if you're operating in an environment that has lots of metastatic devices, like here, I'm showing here in the video, in an urban environment. Um, and then, uh, you know, you could also use the trace route routing feature. If the node is not fixed, what, what are you going to do? If it's moving, if it's in a vehicle, if someone's on foot and they're moving, it's going to impose even more challenges to this hunt. So onto the advance, really what changes here is having something like a crack in SDR. Far more advanced. I've watched lots of videos on this. It seems fairly simple to use. It is not cheap. If you get all the equipment you need, the SDR, the antenna kit, you know, a pie uh, to run that, and then all this other stuff, you're looking nearly $1,000 depending on shipping costs and taxes and sales tax and things like that. Uh, so usually your basic, you know, person is not going to just go out and spend that kind of money on something if it's not something they're really interested in doing and learning how to do. Uh, so of course, it's not really about government agencies, but yes, of course, they fall into the advanced uh, category because of the equipment they possess. If you, um, of course, more advanced equipment because they've got bigger budgets than most of us, obviously, and they use, tend to use aerial platforms like fixed wings or rotary wing aircraft or drones. <laughs> and they can orbit around an area once they've picked up the signal they want to pinpoint and it makes it much quicker and easier for them to zero in on that location. So skills, of course, and more advanced or good understanding of mechanistic and more protocols, solid understanding of radio signals and propagation. And then of course the map reading and navigation could be used as a backup to, because the Kraken does all, all that for you but you might want to back some of that up with your own, uh, you know, separate navigation, you know, maps or something like that. And then of course, challenges are going to be the same. They might be able to work through these challenges faster. The Kraken does seem like it works through some of the multi-path distortion better um, when they're getting signal reflections, but I don't know how it would act uh, when you're getting different mesh hops. Uh, or the node they're trying to find is hopping, or if there's other nodes in the area sending out transmissions, 
how is it going to react to that? And they're still going to be posed with the low power and short transmission time. So if that, if that node doesn't pop back up and report, how do they, how do they find it again? You know, they've only got one or two times and the, the system has only been able to pinpoint it once or twice to try to get a bearing. So I could see where that could be challenging and people are driving to do this. So if they're covering a large area, they have to drive around this area to try to get these, uh, these readings so that they can get the system can calculate a bearing to the, where this radio or node is at. So to wrap up, so how do you better set up your Mestastic device to prevent from being radio direction found or to make it more challenging at least is you can disable smart position. If you're not familiar with smart position is, it basically updates if your device has a GPS. I think the default is like a hundred meters if you move and then it has a time also uh, that'll constantly be reporting. So you can turn that feature completely off or at least change the settings to further distance uh, before it sends an update or more time. Um, you can use client, the, the role client hidden, which, uh, according to meshtastic.org says it's kind of makes you basically not seen in the mesh. So you, no one knows that you're there. You're not reporting on the map. Now that doesn't prevent your signals from being intercepted. But if someone's using the meshtastic app to help, help them radio direction, find you, it might make it a little more challenging. Uh, and then GPS mode, you can use not present. Uh, so it's not reporting that or you can go into your channel settings if you have if you're using the default long chass uh, long fast channel like a lot of people are you can disable the position on that or you can also um, go in and change how accurate it, the, it is reporting you can have that enabled and like the example here in the video got it I think the default setting there enabled like 1.8 miles, you know, so that's the ring that it's going to, someone's going to see a position, but you could be, you know, a mile or more away from that position. You can change that further or, or you can use and use precision location, which I don't recommend using those type of settings unless you're using it on a private channel that you've set up with your own encryption. So if you found this useful, you got any good, useful comments, please put them down below, like the video, subscribe. Check out our social media links, website, and much more down in the description section. Thanks for watching.